What up, everybody, and welcome once again to The End Zone, brought to you by Jim Bag Entertainment, and this is your football show by guys that love football. As always, it's your host, your boy Craig, here with my co-host, your boy Ace, and we back in full effect. Yeah, we missed a week, uh, but we're getting into it, and we're back uh, to give you the news that we love to give. And we're going to start it off the way we always start off our episodes, and that's the injury report. Uh, most notable injury of the season is Saquon Barkley. Uh, Saquon Barkley goes down for the season uh, with an ACL, with, with a um, tearing ACL, mm-hmm. uh, and that spells big trouble for the New York Giants who have who revolved their entire game around Saquon Barkley. So with him gone, uh, they're going to bring in some help, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later. But uh, that's it for him. So it's you no know, next man up. It's time to move on. Uh, and then another notable loss, uh, Christian McCaffrey. I know if you're like me and you drafted him number one overall, you're a little bit upset. Uh, he's uh, set to miss anywhere from three, uh, three to six weeks. They're saying he's already been put on IR. That means he's out for a mandatory three weeks. Uh, but they did say uh, from four to six. Uh, Cortland Sutton out for the year. Uh, the Denver Broncos number one wide receiver. And with that goes Drew Locke. Uh, Drew Locke could potentially come back before the season's over. But Cortland Sutton is definitely out for the season. That's a big blow. Uh, you know, some some people saying Drew Locke was going to give... Uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes a run for his money. I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it as well. <laughs> that I, sounds good. I, I believe I, I was a little bit on the hype train when it's, it first it's just, started. It just hurts that Denver team because it's like they lose Von Miller and then they come out and play the first game. They play well. Yeah. And then um, their defense played really out, outstanding. Mm-hmm. And then it's like injury after injury after injury on top of the best player on your team already being yeah. out. And it that, just doesn't and help the said, morale of the team at all. Yeah, and that being said, Vaughn Miller also out for the season. So, you know, De- Denver Broncos taking a huge hit, but no team took a bigger hit than the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, George Kittle goes down. Uh, you know, he's going to return. Mm-hmm. He could return as early as this week. Uh, they might hold him on an additional week just to get him back at full health. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo goes down in week two, um, as well as Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa out for the season, and that might be the biggest blow to the San Francisco 49ers that they could even uh, that they could imagine. But on top of that, defensive lineman Solomon Thomas is out. Uh, cornerback uh, Richard Sherman out for the season. Uh, Tevin Coleman. Put on injury reserve, could be gone for the season. Uh, Raheem Mostart out this week, possible return next week, but still, that's another injury to the team. Uh, and they started off the season with Debo Samuel on injury reserve, no timetable on when he's set to come back. Uh, so they're starting a uh, backup quarterback, backup tight ends, backup running backs, and who you know they're gonna probably start out with Jared McKinnon. Uh, but they got and they got a few guys that they can that they can uh, swap through. The good thing about that is is just that, you know, they got a lot of guys hurt, but they they're playing versus the Giants. So, I think they're still capable of beating the Giants. So yeah. it's just like yeah, they have a lot of guys out, and the injury list goes on forever. But I think they should be all right. This just this just week, this week this week they should be okay. But you know, they went from being a team expected to to have a possible. Uh, to go on a possible run to compete for uh, another Super Bowl run to being like, will they even make the playoffs? Yeah. So that's a tough hit. Uh, David Njoku, tight end for the Cleveland Browns, out for the season. Uh, Jamison Crowder goes down. He's hurt. Le'Veon Bell, you know, the, the centerpiece of that Jets offense, out for a few weeks. Uh, A.J. Brown for the Tennessee Titans has been out for two weeks now and is expected to miss at least one or two more games. Devontae Adams, uh, they say the injury isn't so serious. It started off as an ankle sprain, uh, then went to a um, somewhat of a, I don't know, I guess not a very bad hamstring injury. But hamstring injuries can linger throughout the season, Absolutely. so that's tough. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, what a messed up injury. Goes in to get a pain reliever shot in his chest, and the doctor punctures his lung. 
right before the game. It's if if anybody's the most unluckiest person in the NFL, it has to be him. It's almost like his QB position job always almost give give it away. Yeah, like, man. he always gives away, but it's really that you it's can't not on really, him. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's not on him. Really, and and so that that sucks, you know. He misses a game, and uh, and uh, uh, Herbert has to step in. Justin Herbert steps in for him. We'll talk about that later as well. Um, Richie Incognito sent to uh, injured reserve. Big blow for this for the Saints. Michael Thomas out for a few weeks with a high ankle sprain. He's already missed one week. Uh, expected to miss this week as well. Uh, no definite return. Jalen Rhaegar out for six to eight weeks. And that's a huge blow to Philly because, I mean, Philly was all, they're already out. Uh, they, they're already um, hurting with Alshon Jeffries not returning yet. Jalen Rhaegar was supposed to give them some cushion. And now he's out. Now he's out for a good chunk of time. It's going to be irrelevant to helping them make any type of playoff run. Um. Um, what's his name? Irvin, Bruce Irvin. Bruce Irvin He's yeah. out for the season. Uh, Kenny Galladay missed the first two weeks of the season. Expected to return this week. Um, who else? We got Paris Campbell sent to injury reserve. No timetable for when he'll return. As well as safety Malik Hooker. So that's just the list of the most notable injuries this season. Uh, there are more players that have gone down. Some people, you know, uh, you know, of lesser known. McCaffrey, you said? No, I said Christian McCaffrey right after Saquon Barkley. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is set to miss four to six weeks, yeah, but I guaranteed three weeks on injured reserve. Um, so, with that being said, a lot of players went down in week two. Uh, I have zero hope that no more will go down in week three. It's looking like without a preseason and without a full training camp. Players' bodies are just not prepared for what they're being put through. With that being said, AC with the recap. All right, so we got the recap from uh, week two of the NFL. So we'll go back to the, the Thursday night football game when it was Cincinnati uh, Bengals versus the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns won 35-30. Great um, game. A great game. Indianapolis Colts uh, beat the Minnesota Vikings 28-11. Uh, New York Jets lost to San Fran, 31-13. Uh, Tennessee Titans beat the Jacksonville Jaguars, 33-30. Uh, Chicago Bears lost, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Chicago Bears beat the New York Giants, 17-13 mm-hmm. in the grind game. Yeah, uh, Green Bay won 42-21 versus Detroit Lions. Uh, Los Angeles Rams, uh, they won 37-19 versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Tampa Bay wins 31-17 versus the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers win 26-21 versus the Denver Broncos. Uh, Dallas Cowboys win in probably the game of the week uh, versus Atlanta, 40-39. Buffalo Bills win versus the Miami Dolphins, 31-28, in a game that killed everybody. Um, Arizona wins 30-15 versus Washington. Um... Baltimore Ravens win 33-16 versus Houston. Uh, Kansas City Chargers wins in... I mean, Kansas City Chargers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Kansas yeah. City Chiefs uh, played versus the Chargers. They won in overtime 23-20, which is probably the second best game of the week. Yeah. Uh, Seahawks played versus the Patriots and beat the Patriots 35-30, which was another game of the week. Another game of the week. Um, we had some great games this year. I mean, the, this week. the Oakland Raiders beat New Orleans Saints 34-24 uh, in a Monday night week. game. Maybe the upset maybe, of the year. I wouldn't say that. I don't know, man. I wouldn't say that. I beg to differ because it's... Well, we're going we'll, 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 to talk about, about that. Yeah. All right. So, with that being said, uh, one of the, one of the uh, you know, you know, next up biggest pieces of news... Um, a player that's been along in limbo right now is Devontae Freeman. Uh, he's met with teams like the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Seattle Seahawks, uh, and, a, and a few other teams this season trying to find a home and not finding the dollar amount that he believed he was worth after being released from the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, finally finds a home at the new, with the New York Giants after Saquon Barkley goes down for the season. 
uh, Devontae Freeman goes to the Giants uh, and, and tries out for them on Monday and inks a deal one year worth up to $3 million. Now, this is what confuses me about this deal. We already know the Seattle Seahawks offered him four mil a year for, I believe, at least two years. And you said that wasn't enough money, but now you'll play for the Giants for a contract worth up to three million, which means it's probably a mil or two with some incentives to get you to three. How does that make sense to you? It doesn't, yeah. but I think with him, he's more so trying to chase the money. But in reality, that's like he's going to get $3 million and he just basically loses out on $1 million. So it's a $1 million difference to play with a way better team. A, wait, 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 play with a way better? You think Giants are better than the Seahawks? No, no, no. I'm saying like he's taking $1 million. I mean, I meant to say it wrong. He's taken one million more to not play with that better team. Like he, yeah. he should have took that one million pay cut to play with Seattle. Like, why wouldn't you want to play with arguably the best quarterback in the league? Like, exactly. You get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, like, Freeman, it, Freeman hasn't been right. Honestly, he hasn't been right since 2016. 2016 was probably his best year, or 2015. Yeah, I think it was. I up, think it was 16. No, no. It wait. was 2015, 2016. Fifth, yeah, he put yeah. Out, like back to back thousand yard seasons yeah. with like 11, 12 touchdowns. And last year, I will say this. At least from a fantasy perspective, Freeman was good. He was good. I mean, I had, I know I had him on my fantasy team. He was in double digits every week. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no 100-yard, two-touchdown running but back. But You can't, and this is yeah, the tough it's, thing. it's not the same. Yeah. You can't go off of fantasy when it comes to football because if you look at his stats, he only rushed for 656. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah. he only had two touchdowns on the year. Yeah. Oh, Last really? Year. Yeah. Oh, so, so he was, a lot of so his he was, was like, getting yards. Not really, because he only he he well he had six fifty six rushing, but he oh, probably yeah. but he's a he's a, someone that can catch the ball at the backfield. Yeah, exactly. So in those PPR leagues and stuff like that, he looks like a he, dog. Yeah, but he in looks reality, good. like you look at his numbers and you, and you look at what he did, he his production is like yeah, he's not great. He's not even like. Top fifteen in the league in production. Oh like, yeah, not even close. Over and the last by, couple years, and, and behind that terrible offensive line, like he's, it, it's gonna, it's not even. But gonna the thing worse. about Atlanta, but the th- and the thing when he was in Atlanta, they actually got the ball in the red zone a lot, and he just couldn't finish the play. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. And yeah. then they came, then they had the two headed monsters, and then it was like, okay, well he's totally better than Freeman, so he won the job, and that's what got them got Freeman out of there. So I just think that. <clears throat> Freeman's not going to do much this year. No. It's, it's just, he just knows that he can get the ball down there every play, and that's why he probably went there right now. I get it. And if he went to Seattle, he'd be part of a, he'd be part of a, 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 a running back by committee. He's not, he, he wouldn't dethrone Chris Carson, so he'd be the backup. He goes to the Giants. He's going to win the starting job. So maybe that had a little bit to do with it. Uh, also, talking about players being signed, Blake Bortles, Sign inks a one year deal with the Denver Broncos uh, to to uh, step in and uh, make up for losing entire, um, Drew Drew Locke. I hate that. I I mean I hate Blake Bortles, but I think if you're just trying to like make it through the season, you know, but my he's, thing is he's adequate. My thing is this: look at some of the guys that's already out there that's in the free agency market. You know. I can't think of anybody that that I would pick over Blake Bortles at this particular moment. Nobody? There's nobody I can okay. think of I'd pick over Blake Bortles. Okay. Do you have somebody in mind? I don't. I yeah. just feel like he's just no good. So I mean, the only I thing just, the only like, thing that makes sense like, to me is the same thing that makes sense to me for a team um, uh, like, like Cleveland is if you're going to move on from Baker or if Drew Locke's hurt, I'm calling Indianapolis and being like, hey, since you don't want Jacoby Brissett, we'll trade. We'll, we'll trade you for him. That's what I'm saying. That's why right the Giants should make should have made a trade for somebody. Like, there's plenty of good quarterbacks. I mean, on the, the bench. Broncos. Yeah. I mean, the Broncos should. Have yeah, they a, they should have made a trade. Blake Bortles. I feel like right now. But it did happen so sudden, and yeah. they had to just get somebody. I but feel eventually like they're gonna have to trade for somebody. I feel like they're saying this. We got our best defensive lineman out. We have our best wide receiver out. We have our franchise quarterback out. We're not winning much this season. Let's just bring Blake Bortles on for a cheap contract 
and let's get ourselves a top 10 pick. You know? Sounds good. Season's down the drain. All right. Uh, next uh, game that I've been dying to talk about uh, from the moment, since, since before the game even happened, but even more so after it finished, Russell Wilson versus Cam Newton. Ooh, Patriots nah, versus nah. Seattle Seahawks. One of the greatest low-key rivalries in football mm -hmm. uh one you know one thing you know if you don't know now you know seahawks and patriots during the tutelage of um excuse me during the during the time frame of bill belichick and russell wilson mm -hmm. there's been four matchups yes patriots have only won one but it was the only one that mattered and that's that super bowl victory so we've had four times that we've faced Russell Wilson. You think that we'd be able to figure him out. But when you've got the best quarterback in football and one of the greatest coaching minds in the NFL. You know what I was thinking? After watching what he did, right? Yeah. And this might sound absurd, right? But after watching what Russell Wilson did, mm -hmm. I, I thought back to that game, to that Patriots game. And I said to myself, if he wins that Super Bowl right there, right? Mm -hmm. He might be going down as the greatest quarterback ever. Oh, no, that's tough. He I'm might be the greatest quarterback of his time. Look at the numbers. Look I'm, at his numbers. Stack his numbers against oh. any. Oh. Stack his numbers against any top name quarterback. Quarterback, quarterback rating, all that. Stack yeah, it up against him. He's, he's, he's the most. He's you can say, yeah, they the got most. Four, I'm talking about what I'm saying is greatest quarterback ever is, of course, they're going to say Montana and Brady because they won more than him. But as far as. His numbers and what he did to that team and the players that he had. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson like, has on. played behind one of the best. I'm and that's best, why it's always the a worst. Personal. It's he's played behind one of the worst offensive lines his and, whole career. And when has he ever had a, a supporting cast that you're like, wow, that's an impressive. No, he's finally getting that. He no, he still numbers. doesn't even have it. But but you have you have a second year wide receiver in DK Metcalf, who's he, a dog. Who, but, who we saw him coming from a mile away. Yes. But he ain't, but he ain't reached his potential, not nearly. But Craig, look at what he got. Look at what Russ got surrounded with him right now, compared to the rest of his years. Like what I'm saying. Yeah, is, this is the best he's had, yeah. and he, and the best he's had. It like I'm trying to give him more credit. The the best he's had is still not that great. Tyler Lockett is a utility I'm guy. You, I'm gonna give you a stat, right? Yeah. The craziest stat I read the other day. He has more touchdown passes thrown right than now. Than incompletions. Than incompletions. I know. Russell Wilson is the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. He is the most gritty, team-leading, drive-winning quarterback in the NFL. Like, Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the NFL. And but got, I will but say this. I'll come off of one... One play killed his career. One, one play. play. One, well, well, not necessarily. One bad, one bad coaching call. Yeah, but I'm just saying the yeah. one play killed his career in general. Like, not really killed his career, but they crucify him for that one play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now let's fast forward to this year. Look at Josh McDaniels. Has Cam Newton. He saw what happened when Seattle had the chance on the one. They throw a pick. Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks. Seattle. Seahawks. Oh, you said Seattle. Yeah. So my bad. in my head, I heard Atlanta. No, Seattle. So they had the ball on on the one, throw a pick in the Super Bowl. Then fast forward in the game where the Patriots grinded it out and nobody gave him a chance, and they're in that same position, and he ran that run. You get what I'm saying? And he gets stopped. And he gets stopped. So it's kind of like for all the fans out there in the no stadiums, oh, why did he run that play? That's you know exactly what? why because history always repeats itself. And for all the people who don't know football, that's why they ran the ball right there. Due to the simple fact is they didn't want to get judged like Seattle did and throw mm. a pick down there. That's the only reason why mm. any good coach, you know what? any smart coach is going to run the ball on the one yard line. I don't care who you are and what you have. You run the ball on the one. Don't matter what nobody say. Yeah, you can get away here and there doing play action, but you see what happens when you do it. You lose the Super Bowl. So You know what? That's how I feel about that's that. That's actually, you know what? Like, I hadn't really even, like, considered that, that it's like we got put in the opposite. We got put in the yeah. exact same scenario against the exact same team. And you can argue that what if they did that with Marshawn Lynch and we did the same thing to them. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, but I also disagree, and this is why. And it brings me to the play from the Raiders game. And 
from the Patriots game. We got the ball inside the inside the inside the one two yard line, right? Everybody knows it's gonna be a QB sneak. Run the ball with Cam. So my Stop thing it. is, so my thing is, I, there's two plays I'd want to run, either a e- either a fullback tight end slant, yes, like we did with the fullback, or like the Raiders did with their fullback, no. where they did a slant and and we scored. Hold on, yeah. wait, wait, hold on, but, wait. But we did it. We did it in that Look game. That. Go back and re- and watch on YouTube that play. Yeah, if he doesn't get tripped up. Oh yeah, that's, that's in there. It's a kick. Yeah, he's scoring. Let's not forget he's he got scoring. Tri- let's not forget he got tripped up. So yeah, you yeah. can't really say it was a bad play call. Yeah, no, because was... without him getting tripped up at the line, that six he had nothing but green. Oh, he Whether did. Whether everybody knew that play was coming or not, he still had the opportunity yeah, to that score one, that. Yeah, one get player up. was able to get over the line. Now let's, and trip now him let's up. backtrack. No one football, you know me. What's up with your guy in the kill, Harry? You don't get hungry enough to score that. On the oh, pass that he threw him I to know. get you in that situation, I know. me being a, a receiver, knowing time, knowing that I only got under nine seconds, mm-hmm. and I catch and it, there's no hard. way I'm catching it and dropping. I'm catching it and I'm fighting for my life yeah, to get yeah. that extra one to two yards to score yeah. that touchdown. I so agree. it should have never even came down to being in Cam Newton's hand. It should have been the kill Harry. It should have been the kill Harry scoring that touchdown, yeah, and yeah. that's it. He making so, him, now. I want to say two things, right? The last thing, the one thing I was gonna say about that play is I I've been saying this all week after watching that play. But as a fan, we can say whatever we want. But I would have what I would have did was I would have set up somewhat of a spread offense. A receiver on either side, tight end, tight end on the end of the line. I would have dropped Cam back. I would have ran him to the right. If the defense bit on him, pass it into the end zone. If they don't bite on him, he could he could have drove hard into the end zone. And now maybe that play gets busted up. I don't know. But that's that that's that that, that was a play I think I would have liked to have seen. But with that being okay. said, let's also take into account right. We lost by five points, correct? Mm-hmm. Had Nick Folk made that field goal. The not it, a regular field goal, not yeah. an extra point. Yeah. We would have been down by two, and we would have kicked a field goal to win the game. So you know, I'm just impressed that going up against a guy like Cam Newton, I mean, excuse me, like like Russell Wilson, Cam Newton was there, down for down, play for play, drive for drive, and he was there at the end of the game. And it was one like you know one good defensive play shut us down. It's like. You got to love him because you saw what he did, like, in a situation where his back is against the wall. Yeah. Like, like I told you, there's going to be games where he's going to have to face adversity. And depending on what he does in that situation, depending on how he's getting labeled. Yeah. And his back against the wall facing adversity on Sunday, he was able to even march his team down the field to give him a chance to win. To get yeah, to even get like, in the, look to at that. Get the nobody, opportunity. Nobody even, it's almost like. Everybody was disrespecting the man, saying he can't do it, he ain't got it no more, he can't stay healthy. Mm -hmm. To the point, it's almost like, oh, why didn't you run this and this play to make you win the game? It's like, come on. Like, Yo, like, come on, bro. I mean, he shouldn't, like, put to to the outside world, they didn't even think he would be in that opportunity to do that. Yeah. And the way he was slinging it, yo, that that pass to Edelman, diving, diving catch, and, like, he was airing it out. He was hitting people so beautifully. And I I, got to say, 79. I was a little. You you said you said one thing, but as a whole, I was a little disappointed with Nick, with Nikhil Harry. The man can't get no yards after the catch. None. He was getting tripped up, like literally shoelace, tri- like shoelace tackles. I'm like, bro, you're supposed to be our number one wide receiver, and you're getting shoelace tackled I looked at, I looked over at, and over. I saw that play. I said, I saw the ball go up. I was like, oh, they're gonna win this game. And once he went up, and he kind of dropped, I saw oh, they're gonna lose this game. Just like that, in the, in the split of a second, because as a receiver, you go up and you fight. Yeah. And you fight for that extra yardage. Yeah. And that's why I always tell you um, about Julio Jones. That, I, I knew you, you know were going to say like, Julio not, Jones has that same problem. You know what I'm saying? Same problem. You don't yeah. fight for the odds. You, and, you, and, we, and you need that. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like I feel like, I feel like I, what I'm hoping is that Bill Belichick course corrects him. Because... This dude, this dude's getting tripped up. He's dropping down, like he's making. I mean, granted, I feel like this is actually his rookie year. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't really play last year, so to me, this is his rookie year. He's making rookie mistakes. Okay, we can we can build on that. But Cam is playing amazing ball. But Russell Wilson is a beast MVP right now, man. 
right now, he to me, he's the best quarterback in the league. And he's going almost perfect in some games. Oh man. I mean, I, 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 I don't even want to say some games. I want to say pretty much every, like, yeah. he, these two games have been perfect games for him. So we'll see what happens in the future. Um, now let's talk about, in my opinion, the upset of the week. Las Vegas Raiders getting their first home victory over the New Orleans Saints. Hmm. Like, I mean, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. They didn't have Michael Thomas. But... You're supposed to have one of the best Hall of Famer veteran quarterbacks in the league, and he wasn't really playing that great. Yeah, I like honestly speaking, I wouldn't. Me personally, I would not call it the upset of the week due to the simple fact is it's um you had the Raiders going into a new stadium. Number one, yeah, they're opening up a brand new stadium. Yeah. Not to use an excuse, Drew Brees didn't have his main weapon, but that's no that should be no excuse because he has plenty of weapons over there. Plenty of weapons. But the way Emmanuel that... Emmanuel Sanders has, uh, even last year, was a number one wide receiver. But there was two plays that hurt that game. Two things that hurt that game. The number one thing is when Drew Brees threw that pick in the second quarter to change to change the game. Yeah. Uh, they was up like 17-0. He threw a pick and then they started to come back. They, they started um, going with the tide, yeah. Yeah, and then it was like you got to give a lot of love to Gruden for not getting away from the game plan. Mm-hmm. He stuck to the game plan. He stuck with Wilder, your guy. Oh, like, Wilder, man. Wilder's like the, the, a beast. Nobody knew who he was till you started mentioning him crazy and hearing his story and stuff like that. We went over it on the show way before when he first got signed and Craig was speaking highly of him. We went about his show, how he how they saw him at a game playing catch and they took a pick him up. We went through all of that, but for them to stick with like that old school run, 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 hit the tight end offense, not try to stretch the field too much. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, like I saw in that game, this score could have been a lot worse. Because I saw in that game when Derek Carr, he was missing rugs on the deep ball. Because I feel like yeah. rugs is almost like Cheetah Hill. Nobody can cover those guys one on one. So there uh-huh. was a lot of times where Ruggs was running he wide went, open down yeah, the field. And he, he wasn't. He just I don't think he was. It. I don't think he was ready and pre- enough prepared for Ruggs' speed. They didn't have enough yeah, practice. Yeah, but and, now I'm watching film. He's gonna start seeing it more and more. Oh, yeah. And I guarantee you, you're gonna see Kyle because Kyle loves to sling. Yeah. So now you're gonna see him really slinging downfield because. Yep. And I was watching the Saints like, damn, he threw it to Wilder right here on the on the on the tight end like like drop, but. This dude was wide, wide open on the post cut. Could have been a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Or this dude were in a corner. Could have been. Or there was one play where the dude just held him and did the pass interference because he smoked him at the line. Like, yeah. these are things like a smart DB will do that. Whenever time a smart DB, DB lose, you're supposed to take that 15-yard penalty or that spot foul because yeah, you'd rather it, give up that penalty than a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he's going to get more like that going on because if you're watching film on this kid, He's wide open down the field. Plenty of, I counted like eight or nine times in that game where he was wide open down the field that he didn't get the ball. Mm. And I was just shocked, like, wow. But, but I was like, they're not gonna, and I said that to myself, like, they're not going to miss this too much. But that Saints defense, one of the toughest defenses in the league, playing really well last night. And that Raiders defense is mediocre at best. And they held the, they, they held the Saints down to allow themselves not only to catch up, but to take home that victory. But I really, but the bad thing about it, the crazy thing, I really can't say that because. They like Drew Brees and them jumped up seventeen zero on them. Yeah, but no. You know what I'm saying? But Raiders what, the, the Raiders gave the Raiders had no sacks. But what I'm saying is this: they jumped up seventeen zero, right? Yeah. On them. Mm-hmm. After they jumped up seventeen zero, Raiders came down. I want to say they scored. They did score. They scored. Yeah. And then it was seventeen seven. Drew Brees throws a pick. Then they score again. Then they um score again before the half, and then they take the. I think they want. I want to say the Raiders was winning that I, half. I don't. I, seven, saw, I went to. It was like 17, the half. 17, 14 at the half, and then the Raiders got the ball at the half to come out and score another mm-hmm. touchdown. So once Drew Brees threw that pick, the yeah, Raiders scored. The, the Raiders scored on every single possession yeah. after that. Yeah, that was just a momentum changer, and mm-hmm. Drew Brees and them was fighting back. And I think he might have threw another, like maybe one or two picks. I don't know. But, yeah. I just know to me. Derek Carr was playing some of his best football. They they showed that they have a lot of weapons. 
You got you you got Henry Ruggs. You got Hunter Renfro. You got uh you you got Darren Waller. Uh, you got jo- Josh Jacobs might be one of the best running backs in the league right now. Yes. You got a good offensive line, gunslinger. You know you got all these weapons at hand. I think that you know I'm I'm not all in on the Raiders right now, but no, no, they, got, they, they got they got they got they got they got to show me a little bit more. Yeah. But beating the Saints is a very good start. Yeah. All right, let's go on to uh, Tampa Bay getting a much needed win over the Carolina Panthers. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Colin Coherd and I, I, I actually, when, when he said this, it actually made me feel a little bit better is what he said, he said, so you got a 40, you got a 43 year old quarterback mm-hmm. on a new team playing in an away game against, a arguably, you know, a, a, an equivalent quarterback playing on a team. He's been, I mean, you, you say Drew Brees, you, you think Drew Brees is better than Tom Brady. So if I'm yeah. calling him equivalent, you well, looking well, at what me. Are you, what are you talking about? What I'm saying is they played the Saints at home, at the Saints' home. And he lost. And he lost. Point by period. What but is that, what is that what I'm saying? Say? And, and you, you had Mike Evans hurt. Who cares? He lost. You got He lost, bro. He, he did lost. lose. And this game, no. and this game too, he mm-hmm. would have lost too because don't give him style points because he didn't look good. The person that held this game down was winning for net for them. Because oh, Tom yeah, Brady did look like a 43-year-old guy in a tough-ass conference. So let's not sit here and sugarcoat it and give him all these excuses and stuff like that. I told you, he's going to struggle week in and week out. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's, not the, he's not the 33, 34-year-old Tom Brady in this brand-new conference. I told you, all these weapons, you don't even hear about these guys. Tom Brady, what he do? He threw 33 for 42 for 360. I mean, that's Teddy Bridgewater. Tom Brady only 23 or 35 for 217. Leonard Fournette, 12 touches, 103 yards. Like, I mean, what? Mike Evans went off. Mike Evans, 104 yards. So Mike Evans had 90% of Tom Brady's passing yards? Like, mm-hmm. come on. Yeah. Like, he's TB12. He should be feeding the ball. And let's not mention how Gronk looks out there. Oh. He looked like he should be back in the WWE wrestling. Yeah, Gronk, Gronk, so, Gronk should have so, never and came is why, back. And this is why I tell you, and you know this more than anybody, I have no pity for, for that super team. Just like the Los Angeles Clippers and basketball. NBA I'm not talking reference. about pity. I'm just saying I'm just saying, I'm that just the, saying the, like, the, lo- the loss made sense. It they're playing, it they're playing the it New Orleans Saints. No, there's, no way as lo- there's no way losses make sense. Losses Why? don't make sense. There's no loss They're playing. They're sense. playing a no. Super Bowl contending team. No. One, one of the best teams in the NFL. One of the best offenses in the NFL. One of the best defenses in the NFL at home. How is that? How, how, and is, then you, and then how is he supposed to win? You're struggling with a... A Carolina Panthers team. Where? They didn't struggle. They dominated no, they the Carolina no, Panthers. No, 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 no. What no, was the no, score? No, 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 no. What was the no, score? No, no. Look at the score. I'm about to look up look the, score the score right now because the they dominated Tom Brady them. Tom throwing picks out there. I don't know if he threw picks. He did. He did. He threw a pick. He did. I, I believe game. he threw a back pick. To, back to back games, he threw a pick. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, yes, Tom yes. Brady's gonna throw yes. picks, bro. Yes. Tom Brady's gonna he throw picks. Though. He shouldn't with that. He shouldn't with that. Quote unquote all star. Thirty one seventeen. All star. Thirty one seventeen. That's that double. A fi- that's that double. Was a final score. Yeah, thirty one seventeen. Final score. That's double. Thirty one seventeen. That's at, double. Look at the box score. What box score? What do you mean? That's the box score. You just had it on box score. It's thirty one seventeen. I don't know what you're trying to see. The scores, why scores, scores like first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Oh, like who oh. scored the, the 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 points? The oh, how did not they not how they killed them in the mid third quarter and turned up on the fourth quarter on them. No, how it was a good game all the way to mid third when Leonard Fournette started going crazy on them. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, look at the box score on the yeah, points. Don't yeah, look yeah. at the final score and be like, oh yeah, they beat them by twenty. I mean, they, they no, still they it was they, a good game. It they was, still it was they good, still beat them. They, they, game, they, they still beat them by fourteen points. So I mean, that's two touchdowns. That's that that's big. But I think it was a much needed win. And yeah, they got it was yeah yeah it was a layup, but a much a layup. needed layup. I I agree, it's a layup. All right, now we got to talk about the KC spoiler of the week. Um, Kansas City spoils the the Los Angeles Chargers upset on a Justin Herbert debut. Mm-hmm. Um, this was kind of awesome to me because the LA Chargers came out like we're gonna ball on you right now, and they dominated Patrick Mahomes. 
Patrick Mahomes looked mediocre in this game until the fourth quarter. And you got to agree with me on that. The whole team was mediocre until the fourth quarter. And then he was like, wait a minute, am I about to lose week two? Nah, I can't do that. I just got $45 million. Let me show him why. But had to take it into overtime and won with a field goal. Uh, that looks kind of shady to me. It doesn't look shady to me. It look, yo, you almost lost to a rookie quarterback. I'm going to tell you two. Rookie so quarterback. I'm going to tell you two things. Yep. I'm going to tell you two things that you need Go to ahead. Know. Tell me. Number one, I try to tell you all the time. In the, in the, all week, KC's preparing for Tyron Taylor. Yep. They're not preparing for, for, Justin, for Herbert. Justin Herbert. They didn't expect Justin Herbert. Justin to Herbert go out there doing a lot of new things that they wasn't even that ready for. That they were not ready for. And it kind of bit the Chargers in the butt. Because they also had a punt on fourth and one because they didn't have no plays in the playbook to run for Justin Herbert. This Remember is that true. Play? Okay. This is true. So it kind of helped and it hurt them. When it comes to KC, who's KC playing this week? What do you, oh, this week. <laughs> they're playing, playing Baltimore. Week? Exactly. Yeah, they're looking, so, they're looking so forward towards so sometimes Baltimore. Sometimes when you look on your schedule and you look and you be like, damn, week two, we got the Chargers with Tyron Taylor. We're going to beat them down. We ain't got to worry about them. Let's, let's put that star, let's put that dub next to them. But we got to focus on well, Baltimore. guess what? My only one thing is, you're going into that game like, I just got to make it out of here healthy. That's it. See, and that's a problem. Because that's what I'm saying. As a, as a you, player, that's what you do. Like you Bill Belichick like, says, we're on to this team. We're on to this absolutely. team that we're playing next. Absolutely, but when you're the Super Bowl, when you're the previous Super Bowl champions, you start looking forward to your hard games. You're getting uh, some I, easy games, you look at it automatically. I hear you. And if you're playing versus a Chargers team with Tyron Taylor, you're not too much worried about it. This is true. But if you're playing versus... A, a Chargers team with those weapons, with a brand new quarterback that me and you both know that should have been the starter from oh. day one, but oh, yeah. Taylor. Oh yeah. So we already know what Hippie could do. So it's like, now it's like, hold on. Now, now everybody's saying like, hey, Hippie gave up his job. Like, those things happen, bro. But Yo. it's good. But here's the thing where it really hurts. It hurts the NFL because KC already, already like we said, adversity. They already faced it. They already had a versus the game in overtime early versus a subpar team, yeah. a bad team. So they already faced adversity early. So I don't know if I call it see, a bad team. Not a bad team, but Wait. you need like you need to see those those close game wins. Like mm -hmm. like like we're giving Cam a credit for his close game loss, but because it was like a really a close game win because he shouldn't have been in it. Mm -hmm. We gotta give Russ credit for his close game win versus Cam. Yeah. You gotta give you gotta give this guy credit for his close game win. Whether it was the versus the Chargers yeah, or not, because they shouldn't have been in that situation. But the Seahawks weren't getting beat up by the Patriots. They were, but they, the Seahawks we, it was, was also, if you want to look at it like a, a spread point of view, the Seahawks was also giving the Patriots seven points, just the same thing as Carolina uh, KC was giving them guys seven points. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So if you look at it from a betting point of view, you lost. The underdog won in that. Yeah, you know the underdog saying? did win. But I actually know someone who like, bet a hundred dollars on that game. And they won because they beat the spread. Yeah, and it's almost like a... But the thing that was most impressive to me is, like, I haven't saw a kicker like that since Janikowski oh. earlier in his prime. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Buc uh, Bucker, what Bucker was the, is good. Um, what was the old, the old uh, Oakland Raiders court, uh, kicker? Um, Janikowski. Janikowski that yeah. had the, one, the face mask like that. I think so. The plastic bar one. He used to wear the old school, like, oh. one bar. Okay, but yeah. That dude was and then his you elbows had, um, looked like he could hit from seventy. What was it, David Akers? Akers, Akers was okay. Yeah, he was good, man. He he has the longest longest field goal, sixty three yards. Then my guy used to play for the Pats that went to Denver. Uh that went to Denver. And he won it with. Uh, you mean went to went to Indy? You talking about uh, Vinatieri? Vinatieri. Uh, Adam Vinatieri. It's the only two only two Patriots kickers, Adam Vinatieri uh -huh. and Steve. I mean, obviously in our generation. Adam Vinatieri, Steven Gostowski. Those are the only two who, kickers. Who was the kicker when Peyton Manning won it in Denver? Oh, um, McManus. McManus. He was okay. He was okay. He's still yeah, playing. Yeah. He was okay. Yeah, but, so. um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I love this game. I love seeing just yo, and Justin Herbert, that boy, that boy ain't afraid of no hit. Mm -hmm. he ain't, now, how about that? How about him running to the sideline, dropping the shoulder on a linebacker and laying him out? Like, yeah, he went down, but the linebacker didn't get up. Hey, these young quarterbacks ain't no joke. Like, no joke. They were all like like a head bit. He reminds me, they got, he got the Cam Newton body. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, quarterback Buffalo. Um, uh, uh, Josh Allen. Allen. 
Cam right. Newton body. Those yeah. guys ain't scared to lay the shoulder on you. Exactly. Like they're already six four, six five, uh-huh. two forty, two thirty. They ain't mm-hmm. scared. Like, like I'm I'm sorry to say, cause you know me. You know I like Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. You know I want to see the boy get a chance, but I'm on to Justin Herbert. I would want I want to see him get a chance too, but you gave up your chance, so it's almost like I mean he didn't, he had it stolen from him. You know what I'm saying? Not really stolen. Yeah, like, yo, the doctor came in and was like. So I got Justin Herbert on my fantasy team. Pop, <laughs> yo, he punctured the boy's lung right before the game, yo. Anytime he was like, he was like, you do surgery, you sh- you should know that there's a, yo, a he, chance that anything. There's no happens. surgery. It was a it was a shot. Yeah, yeah, he was just getting uh, a shot for the pain, yo. And homeboy punctured his lung, yo. That's that's medical malpractice. <laughs> He's about to get a lawsuit because he lost his job. It's crazy. All right, let's move on. Uh, when does Indianapolis Colts say bye-bye Phillip Rivers, come back to the starting lineup, Jacoby Brissett? Well, one, you gotta, you gotta look at it like, what is Indianapolis record? They're one and one. Exactly, so. after They lost just, to Jacksonville. They lost a to, team that was only projected to win one game the whole season. We got a in two. So that's your guy. Oh, my boy, the magic so, mustache, baby. Minshew magic. At the end of the day, it's like I don't go by projections and stuff like that. I just look at it as they're one and one. So he bounced back after that loss. So you he really did beat can't Minnesota. Get rid of him. Yeah, and but but that's the defense. But my He's, thing is, my thing is, if he has another bad game, then you go with Brissett. And I, oh, and you know me, I feel as though Brissett shouldn't have lost his job in the first me place. Neither. But at the end of the day, yes, he had a bad week one. Week two, he bounced back. Let's see what he does week three. Yeah, like, I agree. You got to give him the benefit of the doubt. All right. Let's talk about the five games uh, we're most looking forward to. And the way I think we should do it, I'm going to give my five, you give your five. And, you know, whether we, you, you know, whether we have the same or not, reasons for yours, reasons for mine. Uh, number one pick game for me. I think this might be kind of like a sleeper game, and there's a lot of drama behind this game, is the Dolphins versus the Jaguars. Mm. And here's the reason why I love this game. First off, I told you, before the season started, I said, I want, but actually I think last year when we were talking about moves we wanted to see made, Mm -hmm. I said the Jaguars should sign Ryan Fitzpatrick as a backup because him and Gardner Minshew are cut from the same cloth. Mm-hmm. Two gritty quarterbacks you with nothing Fitzpatrick to lose. You see coming at him, though? Yeah, that's okay, what I'm talking okay, about. That was my okay, next okay, thing. Okay. Is that, like, I feel like these two uh, gunslingers who play, so, play with so much fun and so much heart that it's going to be fun to see them play against each other. But then, they're on Twitter, back and forth. Oh, the beard's better. It looks better. The mu- Oh, no, it's about the mustache. And they're talking trash back and beard's forth. Better. Friendly ripping, and I think this is going to be one of those games that, like, it's going to be fun to watch. It's two teams that are low. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make these two teams look so great against each other because they're two, te- they're, they're two of the worst teams in the league, but they're going to look like two of the best teams in the league against each mm-hmm. other. They're going to be bombing it down the field. They're going to be running the ball left and right. It's just going to be a really exciting game to watch, um, and I just can't wait to see it. And two underrated quarterbacks going back and forth. I can't wait. Uh, next, the next one on the list for me is Cowboys versus the Seahawks. Uh, once again, it's going to be a high-velocity offensive game. Neither team has a high-level defense. Both teams have quarterbacks who know how to move the ball down the field. Both teams have really good, uh, really good the Seahawks passing. Seahawks defense is way better than... It, it, it's better than, yeah, but not their front seven. Let, I wouldn't even. I would not say their front seven's that know. good. The 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 thing that makes the Seahawks defense so awesome is that boy Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams is like the Russell Wilson of the defense, man. In that Patriots game, what about, um, he was so disruptive. What about uh, what's his name? Who? The linebacker. Can um, which Cam Chancellor? Is he still mm-hmm. on them? Is that is it Cam? The one that got like a, a hundred ring in Madden. He'd be wearing the gold cleats. <sighs> I don't know. Damn, I know what you're talking about and I can't think Bobby of his name. Wagner? Is it right? Bobby Wagner. Wagner. Bobby yeah. Wagner. Right, oh yeah, right. so you got Bobby Wagner, Boom. Jamal Adams, and I think Cam Chancellor, right? Did yeah, he, Chancellor. Yeah. I think he's still he's there. He's still there. Yeah. So 
Come on, I, bro. But listen, uh, but listen. I hear what you're saying, but I just don't. I, I I don't put a lot of stock in 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 Seahawks defense. But I do put a lot of stock in both of these teams' offenses, and I just think it's gonna be a high scoring. You know, point team. Both teams are gonna put up 30, 40 points, and Russ is and, gonna win again. And Russ is gonna absolutely win again. Uh, next on the list is the game I know we both have is Chiefs versus the Ravens. Who's the better quarterback? Who's the better team? Uh, and what we all most likely believe is going to be the AFC championship time on, time game. On, time on, time on. Yeah. Let's rewrite that. If Lamar Jackson's win, that doesn't make him the better quarterback. No, I understand that, but the this whole year is gonna. But it's who's the better quarterback right now? That's the argument, and it's not gonna be determined by just this game. No, okay, that's why and, I just want to make. No, no, no. How yeah, can this, you determine the best quarterback okay, by one okay. game? Yeah, you can move on. You what I'm saying on. is, this I'm just season, making sure the fans know that. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're this not, season, you know what I'm saying, we're I mean, not justifying it off this. Yeah, one yeah, game. but. You, you know that the stuff, argument is going to be all season who's better, Lamar or Patrick Mahomes. But it can be, but I got I, I got to look at the numbers. Oh, of course. I got to look at the big games that they play. Of in. course. You and got to look up the head-to-head. The head-to-head head. Yeah, head head is going to play part. a huge part in it. But it all you, depends on the style points. Yeah, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, he beat him, and then the defense won the game for him. Like, no, I, you know me. I watched the game, and oh, I was yeah. watching like this with binoculars. I mean, both both quarterbacks have progressed in their own way. You know, Patrick Mahomes is starting to look at the game more intelligently, starting to audible out of coverage and whatnot. Lamar Jackson trying be like becoming a pocket passer, but who can run the ball if he needs to? Like these are two quarterbacks who are developing in front of our eyes, and they're they right now to me, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson are the new Brady and Peyton Manning. Obviously, different style of football, but to me, this is the new Peyton and Brady. Who's the better quarterback? You're going to have your people say Patrick Mahomes. You're going to have your people say Lamar Jackson. And this season is going to do a lot to prove that. But we have seasons to find that out. But I'm looking forward to this game. I want to see how it goes down. And uh, I, I can't. It, there's, no more, there's no game more exciting. Um, then you have Packers versus the Saints. You got veteran quarterback versus veteran quarterback. You got... Uh, de- a-, a newly developed defense in-, in Green Bay, an awesome defense in the Saints. You got the run game of Alvin Kamara, the run game of of, of Aaron Jones. Both teams could be without their number one uh, wide receiver, so I'm yeah. looking forward to see what happens here. And then finally, you know, I can't can't go a a, a, a game of the week without saying the Patriots. I want to see the Patriots versus the Raiders because to me, you know, the Raiders beat the Saints. Now, can you beat the can, can the Patriots beat the Raiders? Does that mean the Patriots can beat the Saints? Of course not. But it may it may it'll make me feel good to to see the Saints lose to the Raiders and then Cam Newton and the Patriots take them on and, and beat them. This is a tough offense and our and our defense is going is in for a true test and I can't wait to see how it plays out. But we need we we you know we're one and one right now. We need to get another victory so that you know we're above five hundred. So those are my five games of the week. All right, mine is a little bit different. My okay. first game is Atlanta versus uh, Chicago. Mm. I feel like that's going to be a great game. You got Atlanta who's zero and two, who should be one and one after blowing a crazy league. How did we not? We, um, we need to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, after blowing a crazy league and um. And the Bears is 2-0. And, and, you know. How are the Bears 2-0? The guy that I hate is actually balling. So He's I balling. actually got to give him credit. Because. And this is why I think. And I'm surprised Craig haven't called me out on this. I've been I, waiting yeah. for this. You like, know, I should have called you out because you're always calling me out. This guy is 2-0. and And why? Because Nick Foles there came is a in God. and made him earn his job. There is a God. He's 2-0. and So, you already know I like the Bears. So, I'm, I'm interested to see how that, that game works out. The next game up for me is the rookie going to get his first win. Cincinnati Bengals is 0-2, playing versus the 0-2 Eagles. The Eagles look like some cold-blooded trash right now. Um, they need to get better. I think um, this they is look the game really bad. Cincinnati. I think this might be the game for Cincinnati as well. I think they could. If it's any game that they're going to win, it's going to be this one. Um, no, Joe so Burrows is balling out, bro. He's doing what he can, but it's just like Cincinnati is just... They don't got a defense. Old. It's just... It's almost like I look at Cincinnati as one of those graveyard teams. Like it's Cincinnati. Like they're but never if, gonna do good. But they never didn't, gonna get better. They didn't like, invest in the defense. Bro. No, they gotta get rid of those receivers. They gotta get rid of Boyd. 
They got to get rid of, yes. They got to get rid of your other guy. Let's not mention what they're doing for what. Are, how many drop balls did they have in the first two games? I, I don't know how many drop balls they had. Okay, but man. I know AJ. Go look. Go AJ look at how many scored a touchdown. See, see, listen. Score listen, a touchdown. Listen, right, right, right. Score a touchdown. I thought since you've been doing this show with me, you would get better at examining the games. Yeah, no. Nah, we I don't know. look at stats. We look at what you've done. Yeah, the eye yes, test. Yes, AJ Green the eye scored test. a touchdown. But look at how many drop balls he have with dimes right here to him. Did he really? He's dropping. You know, I, I, listen, Tyler Boyd, I watched thing. red zone, so they're you dropping, don't. They're dropping wide receiver screen balls. Oh, see, I'm like watching. That, I'm watching like, red zone, and red zone only shows nah, you good big plays. Nah, you don't, don't really do get that. to see a lot of the um, a lot of the bad stuff. So next up for me, this is one of the games we do have a like is Oakland two and versus the Pats. I want to see how Cam Newton bounce back off of the 35-30 loss in Oakland coming off a big win. I just want to see if they're gonna have that. Oh, I, I got a big win hangover, and I want to see if the Pats really was like, okay, we lost a tough one, we're still hungry, let's see what we're going to do. Yep. Um, next up, uh, the 1-1 one one Los Angeles Chargers versus the 0-2 Carolina Panthers. Only reason why I got that down, because I want to see what Hibbert will do, because um, I think he's going to go off versus, versus the Panthers. Yeah. And I think he's going to earn that position for the rest of the year due mm -hmm. to the simple fact is he's playing a depleted Panthers team without the star running back. So you know they're not gonna get too much of offensive production this week. And you you got a discouraged starting quarterback who came from a five and zero run last year, yeah. and now he hasn't won a game yet. Yeah, so it's tough. You know, but I th but you gotta understand. Like I look at it too. Like he did go, he did go. Um, five thirty three. He went thirty. Five. No, Teddy Bridgewater went thirty three for forty two for three sixty seven, but he threw zero touchdowns and had two interceptions versus them though. So to to go thirty three for forty two, three sixty seven, really good. Yeah. But that zero touchdown stat and that two interception stat doesn't add up for me. And, and they, they don't got a good defense, so it's yeah. like yeah, you, you got a, you got a young defense, all pro, like almost half rookies. It's gonna be tough for them. And then the last one is uh, Green Bay versus New Orleans. Nice. You know, two yeah. shootout, shootout. Exactly. All right, let's do uh, let's do our uh, picks against the spread, yeah, and then. Time. You didn't even put the time either. I didn't put the timer on, and I, I we got time. Okay. We we do got time. So, uh, number one for me, New England versus the Raiders. Uh, New England's getting six and a half, so I'm going with New England. I think New England wins by more than a touchdown, so I'm picking New England. Uh, Chicago going up against Atlanta. Chicago getting three and a half. I'm still gonna. Atlanta needs to get a win, so I'm going to go with Atlanta. Smart, Craig. Smart, yep. Craig. Uh, Cincinnati going up against Philly. Cincinnati's getting five and a half. I think they win this game straight up. Uh, Houston against Pittsburgh. Uh, Houston's getting six points, and I think this is a close game. Uh, Pittsburgh got a strong defense, but I don't think that they win by six, so I'm going Houston. Tennessee versus Minnesota. Uh, this is going to be a tough game. Minnesota is getting two points, but Tennessee is on a run. Tannehill looking like a beast, so I'm going to go with Tennessee. Jets versus Indy. Jets are getting seven points, but they're garbage. They're missing two wide receivers. They're missing their running back. Indy is going to mop them up. I thought they was giving them like 11. The, I saw it somewhere high. And cover, the, the, thing, the, the website you showed yeah. me, they were getting seven. Uh, Carolina versus the Chargers. Carolina getting six and a half. It's not enough points. Justin Herbert going to come in and do and make quick work of them. Dallas versus Seattle. Dallas is getting three and a half. It's not enough points for the MVP of the league. Uh, Russell Wilson's going to kill him. Uh, Detroit versus Arizona. Detroit's getting three and a half. Put my boy Kyler Murray. Your boy Kyler Murray is playing like a man possessed. Him and DeAndre Hopkins made quick work with that connection. It's looking real pretty what over there. I, but what did I say, though? You bro? said it from day one. From that day one, <laughs> before he got drafted, <laughs> no, you've been calling it. But, and look at my guy Larry Fitz stats. Don't, don't sleep on him. Whoa. We talked about this at your house, yes. and what did I say? He get about five, six receptions between 50 and 60 yards a game, no touchdowns. And that's exactly what's going on in the house. Because think about it like this, though. DeAndre's getting yak. He's, yeah. And yeah. I, I said, y'all said DeAndre wasn't going to get the yak. No, 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 no. 
that's what he does. You know, that's my guy. You know, you when know we, was, when we drafted, you know, you know when we drafted, you, know you and K was you know like, my, you oh, you nah, fucking, nah, they're gonna double team nah, him. They're gonna nah, go to Larry nah, Fitz. Nah, nah, He's nah, gonna nah, be nah. fantasy relevant. I know, I know. Only reason why K says that Larry Fitz is fantasy relevant because he picks him every single year, so he loves him. Uh, I love Larry Fitz because but he's if you're, football if you're, relevant. If you're a receiver, not fantasy. If you're a receiver or an offensive player, you gotta love what Larry Fitz did his whole career. Of course, and greatest hands ever in this, the game. They also got a, they also uh, Arizona got a run game, yeah. so they're not just settling for the pass and goal line. Yeah. They're actually running the ball too. They're I running agree. the ball really well. So that's the difference on why Larry Fitz and has as many touchdowns as. Like crazy touchdowns or not, because in the goal line they're actually running. Or well, Kyler Murray, how many rushing touchdowns he got? He's been running it in. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's all a mixture of things with them, and I think like their mixture is hitting on all notes, all levels. Like yeah, they're, they're playing great ball, and their defense is looking good. All right, my last pick: Denver versus Tampa Bay. Denver's getting three and a half, but with Blake Bortles as your quarterback, that is not enough points. My boy TB12 is gonna come in. And make them look dirty. All right. So, I got San Fran minus four over the Giants. Okay. San Fran's going to whoop them. With the, with the, it's a bench versus bench ball. Mm-hmm. But I think that bench is better than that bench. So, Atlanta versus Chicago. I'm going with Atlanta. Even though I always like Chicago, I got to go with Atlanta this week because I feel like Atlanta needs a win. Okay. Uh, they've been right at the door. Uh, Houston plus four versus Pittsburgh. I'm going Houston. I just don't like Pittsburgh like that. I just think they don't have enough offensive power, and I yeah, think my man, I think my man Deshaun Watson, kind of gets a little bit of a break over the last two weeks of the teams that he's been playing mm-hmm. facing. So I think he'll do a lot better and have better production this game. Tennessee versus Minnesota. I like Tennessee minus two and a half. Uh, Minnesota hasn't been looking too hot for me right now, so I like Tennessee minus two and a half. Um, Los Angeles Chargers versus Carolina. Carolina lost my guy, my number one fantasy pick, so I can't go with them. I have to go opposite, so I'm going um, the, the Chargers minus six and a half. Uh, obviously, I've been riding them, and I'm going to ride them all year. I've been riding them since last year. Mm-hmm. Arizona minus six over Detroit. I'm going Arizona. Uh, Tampa Bay minus six over Denver. Like Craig said, I got to go Tampa Bay. Denver just don't got enough power. They don't got a quarterback. They got defensive guys hurt. Uh, Eagles minus five and a half for Cincy. I got to go Eagles here because as much as I love the rookie and I want the rookie to win, this game is more meaningful to for Philly to win. You get what I'm saying? I tell you, it is. Philly needs this win because if Philly doesn't win this game, this they season's lost like, to Washington. like this season's over. So mm. I feel as though like the rookie can lose and it'd be okay. He's just he's a rook. Yeah. But Eagles can't lose this game. No. Um, they're like must-win situation. Especially for Carson Wentz. Uh, Buffalo, minus two and a half versus the Rams. I like Buffalo right there, even though I think Ooh. it's going to be a little bit of a fight. That's but the be a Rams is, fight. But the Rams is banged up too, though. So let's not forget the Rams is banged up. So the Rams at full strength versus a full strength Buffalo team. I would say it could go coin flip, but this Buffalo team, they're and, playing what, and like, what Allen is doing, yeah, they're playing he dope. Already, he's already thrown for almost like 900 yards in, mm-hmm. in, in yeah, almost it's, three it's games. Yeah, it's over 800. Yeah, over 800 yards in two games. Like, you got to go with him. Until, mm-hmm. he's been, until he's determined to be stopped, I got to go with him. And then last but not least, uh, Washington versus Cleveland. Um, Cleveland's given Washington seven points. I'm going Washington. Cleveland's wow. like, Cleveland, I'm going Washington. I mean, yo, the boy Dog Haskins the has been playing well. I like Washington. Now, I, Cleveland's I, killing me, bro. Like, Cleveland hasn't been, I don't know. I want to go back to something I said a while ago, and I, you agree with me, and, it's, and, and right now it's panning out the way I said. One, I said Giants made a mistake not going with Dwayne Haskins. Yes. And Dwayne Haskins right now is proving he's the better quarterback. Yes. Uh, two, even though we didn't get to see enough of it, I said Drew Locke was the better quarterback. And mine, barring, without, had he not got injured, he would have proved that. Daniel Jones is a two-season quarterback. He's going to be a backup next year. Yes. He's going to be a backup. So uh, I just wanted to get that out the way. And it's, and, it's, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's sad because... You had so many other good picks that you could have went over Daniel so Jones. So many good picks. And we saw him. We talked about it. And you know what it came down to. It came down to they was comparing him too much like the Mannings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And him going to the Manning camps and stuff like that. And that's why the Giants wanted him. But 
he's about to be in for the time of his life this year without no. Saquon. And I feel That's, bad. Yeah, but I don't feel bad. All right. Just like, oh, not to mention, I don't feel bad for your other guy, Bosa, getting hurt. There is a guy. My guy. Don't call him my guy. There is a guy. Don't call him my That's guy. There is a guy. Yeah, there is. Um, so let's let's take a quick minute to talk about the worst, the second worst <laughs> loss in Atlanta's career. How do you not only dominate, dominate the Dallas Cowboys, then give up your great lead? And then, onside kick, all you got to do is drop on the ball. But you watch it? You watch the ball? Why are you watching the ball? If you jump on it, right, Even you, all you have to do is jump on it immediately. You jump on the ball. It's a penalty. They get backed up. They got to kick a regular kick. No, my bad. My bad. No, no. If you drop on it, yeah, it's not an official kick. They got a kick no, over. It's just your position. Is it just the position? If no, because if, if it doesn't go 10 yards and you yeah, fall on it. Then they kick over and they have to go back like five yards or something like that, right? Yeah, they would have to go back five. Yeah, yeah they go back like five, 10 yards, whatever it is. They got to kick again. They can't go onside. So now you win the game. It's over. But you don't drop on the ball. You watch it. But you let it get 10. They could have declined that penalty and just keep the ball. Oh, maybe. I'm not sure the rules. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure how the rules go, but I do know that had you dropped on that ball, that Cowboys wouldn't have got it. Cowboys wouldn't have uh, won that game. Ball go in to the non-penalty area. You let it go 10 yards, and then you let them drop on it and get it. Listen, for all my fellow ATLians. I feel bad for you guys. It's time to switch teams, I guys. I'm sorry to you guys right now. But. Wow. The reason why that was disappointing to me is this. Is being a coach, being a player, game on the line like that. When you do special teams every week in practice, right? Mm-hmm. So you got your kickoff team, your kick return team, and your hands team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what the hands team is, yeah. That's part of your special team. Yeah. So, Game on the line, you know the outside kids coming, everybody knows it's coming. You put your hands team out there, your hand team go out there, they know what to do. We're gonna drop on the ball. Yeah. And if the ball is bounced off the off the turf and goes up in the air, you're supposed to box out like back to ball. Boom. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that. That's what you do to cause if I'm in the second line and you're in the first line and that ball goes over your head, all you can do is box out because I'm gonna have to go up there and get it. And you don't wanna leave me out here like this uh-huh. with these guys coming down here uh-huh. because that's their job. They're coming down here to kill me. So you're going to have to lay your body out like this while I go up there and get it and get down and curl up like a baby on the ground. Exactly. That's the hand scene. Now, if they kick it on the ground as a, as being on the hand scene, you don't care if it goes three yards. You don't care if it goes four yards. You don't care if it goes eight or nine yards. As long as that ball is kicked in your vicinity, you drop on it. Point blank, period. That ball stood there like a like a, a flying saucer, like just going around in a circle uh-huh. for a second. Sourcing, sourcing, sourcing. in slow-mo. Until these guys came. There was five, five Falcons versus three Cowboys. And the three Cowboys got that ball. That's crazy. I'm just like, yo, all them guys should be fired. The special teams coach should be fired. The special teams, everybody on there should be fired. The head coach of Atlanta needs to be fired. Uh-huh. Fire the whole. You should have the blank fire yourself at this point. You should have. You should have gave Kyle Shanahan the co-head coaching job, and maybe you would have been in the Super Bowl. Facts, but they, but they. I don't know. Oh man, it's just terrible, terrible. I don't know. That was like the worst game of football ever that I watched in an Mm. NFL game ever. Mm. Just terrible situation. All right. Well, that's all we have for you this week, and until next week, we'll see you in the end zone. Have a good night. (laughs) 